Hey, this is Matt Butcher, streaming live again from SIBO Navigate in London. We are on day two. Uh, Kelsey Hightower kicked off the morning with uh, with his fireside chat. It's been a pretty active day here. You can probably hear a little bit of the din as everybody's around us eating lunch right now. Uh, so I, I just thought I'd spend a little time today, you know, kind of given uh, answering some questions about the serverless AI feature that we introduced yesterday, uh, kind of give some overview and, and what we're excited about there, and also the kinds of things that can be built with something like this. Uh, so yesterday we introduced Fermion Serverless AI, and that is a new feature that is added to both Spin and Fermion Cloud. So inside of Spin, you can now build applications that do AI inferencing. So inferencing is, uh, is the process of starting with something like a large language model, an LLM, and asking it questions, right? So you, you write prompts that you send off to the LLM model. It generates a response and sends it back to you. And the better you do on, uh, on writing that prompt, the more uh, reliable the, the results are that you get back. So there's a, a little bit of work as you're sort of writing just plain old sentences asking questions to the LLM. You've probably seen this style in something like ChatGPT, uh, where where you go back and forth and refine. Uh, what we wanted to do was take that experience and drop that straight into your code, so that it was easy for you to just write code, you know, write in line, run, uh, you know, L uh, LLM dot uh, infer, and then give it a prompt and get back a response and work with it and perhaps send a follow-up response or even many follow-up responses and then be able to build applications using that just as easily as you would use something like a SQL database or key value storage where it's just right there. It's one of the APIs you use every day. So we rolled all of that into Spin. So it's in, inside of the TypeScript SDK, the Rust SDK. You can just start writing in those languages and again, call functions like dot infer and then give it a prompt and get a result back. Now, one of the things about LLMs, though, is that they require a fairly hefty amount of compute resources. And not necessarily, uh, CPUs are not necessarily the best compute resource, right? Instead, GPUs, because of their, uh, you know, high performance mathematical operations, are often better for doing LLM inferencing. And so your typical laptop may have a gaming grade or a sub gaming grade GPU that's sufficient for powering your display and keeping that updated and playing videos, but it's usually underpowered for doing LLM style inferencing quickly. So on the Fermion cloud side of things, we added in support for A100. It's a very high performance GPU uh, that, that is AI grade, right? Where it would take several minutes, maybe five to 10 minutes even, to do run an inference on my local M1 based uh, MacBook. When I push it off into Fermion Cloud, I can do those same inferences in two to three seconds. So just orders of magnitude faster. So. That whole uh, GPU architecture that we're using is now powered by SIBO. SIBO introduced yesterday their new GPU offering. And then, uh, and, and you heard me talk a little bit about uh, Deep Green, uh, who's partnered with SIBO and, and that we at Fermion are now working with. It provides uh, GPUs that are just very ecologically sensitive, just designed to take the waste of GPU compute, and that waste is heat, and use that to do something else. In their case, often it's to heat water in water heaters or in swimming pools or things like that. So this is a really kind of cool way to not only uh, offer enhanced performance for these uh, for LLM-based inferencing, but also to do so in a way that is squeezing out uh, a, a lot of the sort of side effects, right, the heat, and using that for something productive. So we're really excited about all of that. Uh, but the, the real thing for you is that when you sign up for a Fermion Cloud account and you request access to the, uh, the, the AI private beta, then you will be able to use those AI-grade GPUs to do your own inferencing. So that's kind of the, the short uh, explanation for what we introduced yesterday. But this is actually something that fits in really well with Fermion Cloud and with Spin as we've been developing it over time. So when we set out to build Spin, our goal was to build a WebAssembly-based serverless architecture that could get you from blinking cursor to deployed application in two minutes or less. So the idea is if you can develop that quickly, uh, and get from, from your very first few lines of code to something out there and running, then all the sort of uh, you know speed bumps that you experience when you're getting started are just removed for you and you can dive straight into the code that you care about. Now, after we did that, we said, okay, what are some other speed bumps that I as a developer hit in my uh, application development lifecycle that are frustrating to me? And the next kind of phase was, oh, well, 
uh, setting up an extra data service, like a key value storage like Redis or a database, those are things that are kind of frustrating, right? I don't necessarily get any joy from spending time setting up a local version of that and wiring that up with my local version of the application, doing development, and then figuring out what I'm going to do in the cloud and provisioning a data source out there, and then wiring everything up against there, and then kind of maintaining what my local environment looks like and what the remote environment looks like and how they're run in parity, right? So we said, okay, let's give it a shot. Let's start with key value storage and see if we can build an offering where you have key value storage that's just automatically available locally. There's no connection string, no setup, no username and password, no permissions you have to configure. It's just automatically available as part of the spin environment. And then when you deploy to Fermion Cloud, we'll stand up uh, you know, a, a, a cloud version of that, right? Far more robust, far more powerful, but something that can provide those same that same level of services in a way that matches one-to-one -one with what you're getting on the local experience. And then from there, you don't necessarily have to handle the day two operations either. It's not up to you to make sure that your instance in Fermion Cloud is still running. We just take care of all of that for you. So we did that first with key value storage, and then we paired it with, uh, with Terso. Terso does a distributed SQLite database, and so we embedded a local SQLite database for SQL access locally, and then when you deploy into Fermion Cloud, it provisions you a SQL instance in a, a Terso-style SQLite instance in our cloud. So we've got key value storage database, and now we add AI inferencing into the mix. Those three are actually very intentionally combinable in interesting ways. So a key value storage is a great system for caching. If you're going to be running LLM inferencing options that might take two or three seconds to run from start to completion, you may want to cache those results and use them again rather than rerun that inference on every request. Key value storage is a great system for that. Uh, you might have heard some of the buzz on the database side about vector databases. A vector database is sort of a, a specialized... Um, twist on your kind of classic database that allows you to do vector-based distance calculations very quickly. Uh, that might sound complex and, and strange, but in the AI world, when you're trying to precede your model to make sure that you can run inferences against, say, your own data, uh, oftentimes you'll generate these kind of vector mappings and you'll want to store them in a database and then run a couple of compute operations. The cool thing, and before you get too hung up on the complexity, the cool thing is we figured out how to make it simpler thanks to the fact that Terso and SQLite has a vector database extension. And so we've provided a number of examples in our repositories where you can just kind of see how that works and see how to use a vector database, how to pre-generate uh, um, the, all the data you need to store in the database so that when you do the AI inferencing, you can quickly grab that data out, feed that along with your prompt into the LLM, <clears throat> and get back uh, answers that are perhaps more relevant to the data that you actually care about. So here at Fermion, for example, we started playing around with this as a way to add a recommendations engine into Bartholomew, our content management system. So here's how it works. Uh, we can crawl through all of the content on Fermion's website. Uh, it's all in markdown files. We can just load one by one uh, and, and generate these mappings that we then store in a vector database so that the LLM is essentially trained on our specific content. And then when I run an inference and provide those mappings, then I can also get back related answers that are very specific to the content on fermion.com. And so we took this and we ran this whole system and basically could generate then, uh, as you're reading a blog post, here are the top three related articles to that blog post on other blogs or other parts of the fermion.com website. So we've got examples of all of this inside of the Spin Up Hub. You can check out the Spin Up Hub by going to developer.fermion.com slash hub and sort of see this tiled list of all the different examples, all the different pieces of sample code, tutorials, and things like that that will walk you through different aspects of working with Spin, working with serverless AI, working with database, working with key value storage. So we're excited about all of that. Uh, we've got a you know second day here at Sivo Navigate. Uh, we're still at the booth, still giving out t-shirts and things like that, uh, but 
things are going to pretty rapidly come to a close here. So a couple things coming up at the end of the day. Uh, we're going to come back and stream again live here with a panel of experts in the WebAssembly ecosystem, and uh, we'll kind of go around the room. You'll hear summaries of the talks that each person gave while they were here at Sevo Navigate, and we'll do a little bit of question and answer. Uh, and if you've got questions that you'd like to ask them, you know, you can drop them in uh, in the comments then during that particular uh, run. So that'll be at 2 p.m. Uh, British summertime. And then after that, uh, you know, things start to wind down at Sevo Navigate right about the time that things on the West Coast in the U.S. pick up with WasmCon kicking off this afternoon. That's a CNCF Linux Foundation event. Uh, you should see the speaker lineup. It's fantastic. Uh, if you want to learn more about either of those, uh, we got blog posts at fermion.com slash blog, and you can kind of read up on what's coming up today and what's coming up later on at WasmCon later on today and also tomorrow. Uh, with that, I'm going to sign off from the floor here, and I'll see you again in a couple of hours.